Sonny, it's been way too long, man. Yeah? Last been... time was four years ago in Amsterdam? Yeah, a little over four years ago. Anyways, it's good to see you, and I appreciate the generosity in your welcoming attitude for <laughs> making time in your busy schedule. Anything for you, brother. I heard uh, you were doing three projects at this moment. Yeah, um, actually, I am filming a lot. Uh, we are doing a gangster project called mm -hmm. uh, Katao. Mm -hmm. So, Katao in Taiwanese and in Chinese means uh, gangster. So, the gangster culture is very prevalent amongst society. It fits your style also. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I like that, you know, the gangster style. But, uh, yeah, that's where I caught my big break was the original movie uh, about eight years ago, nine years ago. And, uh, you know, now I'm doing that project and I'm also doing another action comedy. Uh, I'm also doing a documentary on Taiwan shipwrecks. So I'm doing a lot of projects. Uh, it is very time consuming. It's, it's very tiring. But and you, you have know a what? family it's, even. It's good to see you. Yes, yes, I have a family, you know, a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter. Uh, my wife is doing a lot of uh, hip hop stuff. She's a rap star in Taiwan. So, but uh, yeah. I no. love that. But the gangster role is what uh, launched your career. Yes. So That's... for the people that don't know you, of course you're here, you're a local superstar in ah, multiple disciplines even. <laughs> thank you. Um, but besides acting, you also enjoy free diving, I heard. Yes, I love diving, free diving. I love the ocean, man. I love, I love sports, I love activities. Um, that's something I'm passionate about. So we do a lot of uh, ocean conservation projects, yeah. shark conservation as well. Um, so that's, that's part of life, I guess. Something that I believe in, uh, you know, besides my acting career and being in entertainment business. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, I'm passionate about just life. And, and, well, I think and you're also a style inspiration. And especially when it comes to two things, one obviously is our mutual passion, which yes. we're going to talk about in a bit. Okay. But you have another passion. Yes. As you open the Empire Motor Club. Can ah, you tell yes. us a little bit about that? Empire Motor Club, uh, of course. It's actually a project that started off as just a passion project mm -hmm. uh, between my best friend and I. And we love cars. We love tuning cars, modifying cars. Uh, you know, hooking up cars, and we were we were really influenced by Paul Walker, Dope. you know, Fast and the Furious yeah. style. So we decided to just do YouTube vlogs, and then it naturally became a brand, a culture brand. You know, the street culture, you know, the street scene, and it became a big community. And uh, you know, I, I want to take you to my little garage later and uh, check out something special, and I think you would like it. I'm not a big car guy, but if I you know. say something like that, it must be good. Yeah, man. Want to yes. hop over there? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So welcome to my little uh, Empire Motor Club garage. It's a very small garage, but actually inside is where we do all our video content uh, for YouTube and everything. So both for Empire Motor Club as well as Empire Watch Club, right? Exactly. So, you know, we, we like to talk a little bit about watches here and there. I mean, we're not as pro as you, but you know, we try, we but try. But you have both <laughs> the Motor Club and the Watch Club. Yeah. So tell me about the overlap and the pros and cons compared to watches, compared to cars, stuff like that. Okay. So. Well, we started, I admire your Porsche. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, so this is, well, first of all, so this is the Porsche that I wanted to show you. Uh, 996. 
Yes, this is this, the 996. I, I don't know a lot about cars, but I know a couple Porsches and I love the color too. Yes, I knew you would appreciate the color. Uh, this is the 996 Turbo. It's a 2002. Uh, I basically, you know, rebuilt it, redid everything to this car, uh, whatever you can think of. But, you know, most importantly, I think for you, I think the color, the and wheels. the Empire Motor Club stuff here. Yeah, we have the Empire Motor Club wheels that we make. Uh, they're forged wheels. Um, you know, everything about it is, it's completely new, but it's also very retro. So what I would like to say is it's, uh, you know, when you say something that's neo vintage, right? Yeah. So for me, it's a modern classic, mm -hmm. something that's about 20 something years old. Uh, something that I think when we look back, uh, and we would be like, wow, why didn't I think that this would be a modern classic? Uh, I like collecting special watches from vintage all the way to modern, but I think somewhere in between is the sweet spot for me. Exactly, you know. because you have both modern pieces, both vintage pieces, and let's say neo-vintage pieces. For example, the watch you're wearing, which you bought from me, yes. of course it's a little bit more, more vintage. vintage, it's from the 70s, yes. but the, the design is so contemporary still, and it's so up to date. Yeah. It so will never lose it, its face, just it's, like, a, like a Porsche. Yeah, it's iconic, it's classic, it's beautiful. Um, so this one, I think, will make a comeback. You know, mark my words, the 996, I know everyone does not like the headlights, but I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to love it. So I think, I think they will make a comeback. Um, but this car that we drove earlier, mm -hmm. this is actually my wife's car. It's the C63 Black Series. And this is more of a modern car, but they discontinued it. And uh, everything is stock, actually, except for the wheels. Um, and it's actually only 800 ever made in the world. Dope. So this yeah. is super rare. So that's why my wife and I were both into cars and watches. Um, and you know, we like to collect rare things. Because she actually picked out this watch, right? Yes, uh, my wife was actually looking for a 5402 for me. And uh, she actually stumbled upon this watch with you guys. And then so she told me about it. And then that's how we reached out. And uh, you will meet her later. You will meet Dizzy later. And, Amazing. Uh, but yeah, um, you we know. We had a drive in this one? We had a drive in this one. No, let's go for a drive in the 996. Dope. Yeah? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Where are we going to? Let's go to my house because you know what? It's almost sunset. And uh, let's go check out the scenery. Check out everything about Taipei from my balcony. I'm let's down, do bro. Let's do it. Seriously, you made me fell in love with Taipei in just one day. Actually, in a couple of hours, maybe two or three hours. <laughs> You've been the best host so far. Thank and you. this view is mesmerizing. It's gorgeous. You Incredible. Can see the entirety of Taipei. And, you know, we're surrounded by mountains on a beautiful day like this. So it's, uh, it's pretty breathtaking to see and to wake up to, you know. And then with the sunset, this is what I wanted to show you. You know, it's, it's gorgeous because we're facing west. Um, and then you can kind of see the newer area of Taipei and then the older area, so we're, it's just gorgeous, man. Dope, dope. I'm glad I you like it though. I'm no, sorry, seriously, I do. I'm glad you like it, so it's... it's I really feel like you're a very passion-fueled guy. Uh, in all the fields, you excel in even. So what ignited the passion for wristwatches? Uh, I would have to go back to my uncle giving me a graduation present uh, when I was in high school. So I was about 17 years old. He gave me a Rolex, a perpetual, and uh, it was uh, just something that ignited it because I, I, never, I, I never expected him to give me that. Mm -hmm. Like, of all people, it should have been my dad or my mother or maybe grandma or grandpa. But it was my uncle because he was into watches and he was the one that was really into cars. And he kind of was the one that uh, helped me become a man. Uh, and also, you know, my father was there as well. My father did like some watches, but he wasn't like a hardcore watch guy. Mm -hmm. He liked cars, but he wasn't a hardcore watch guy. I mean, he, wasn't, he liked cars, but he wasn't a hardcore car guy. It was my uncle. 
And then my grandfather gifted me uh, a Cartier Pasha when I was in college. I was about to graduate. Those were the first two nice watches that were gifted to me by my family. And I uh, was very lucky to have. And that kind of started me off in the watch path. And it gave me, you know, kind of like a, the fuel to learn more. Because just like you said, whatever I do, I, I want to learn, I want to do all my homework, I want to become passionate about, and, but that has to come natural. So it did take me a little bit of time. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started to make money myself. So what was the first watch you bought from your hard-earned money? Um, it was the Offshore Diver back in 2010. Everybody makes mistakes, my friend. So <laughs> it just shows you you still had a lot to learn, right? Yeah. No, just kidding, um, just kidding, of course. No, that was... Uh, no, I made more mistakes after that. <laughs> I, I made more. I made plenty more, to be honest. Um, I, I bought a Panerai radio mirror uh, eight days. Mm. You tossed it off uh, of the I, building? Your, your eyes are just like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, bro? You should not be on this vlog. <laughs> well, honestly, you have been an ambassador of Hublot, so I'm open to anything, my friend. I'm open to anything. I knew you had to stick that in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I, I was. I'll openly admit it. I was a Hublot ambassador. You know what? I Let me hear it in the comments. <laughs> there you go, there you go. You're not going to like the comments though. Uh, no, 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 but seriously, it goes to show you though, you're a very influential guy in the watch scene in Asia and uh, specifically in Taipei and Taiwan, of course. Thank you. Uh, but I do feel like the whole watch culture is really embedded into the entire continent of Asia. Yeah. Do you sure. see a difference compared to, because of course you studied a long time also in the States, do you see a difference uh, how it's embedded in this culture or how it's, for example, in the more Western countries? For sure. I think um, in this region, uh, there will be tastes and preferences that are even different in, let's say, versus uh, Bangkok or, mm -hmm. or, or Thailand, uh, Philippines. And I think uh, from what I see over the years is that Rolex is still king and then PP. Yeah. Um, AP has worked its way up. Uh, however, it's still not like Rolex. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say king, as I, I mean like um, transactions, I think. The amount of people buying and selling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more Rolex you know, with the high-end watch market in Taiwan than anything else. And, and I think Taiwan is very interesting because there's a lot of collectors. There's a ton of low-key collectors and probably some of the world's greatest collectors are in Taiwan. Yeah, but they're not displaying everything on Instagram. No, they're, no just they're not. They're not like me. I, I display <laughs> whatever I want. Well, you actually... <laughs> I like to show off. Honestly, you inspire with that too, because there are a lot of young guys. You're a young guy too. So yeah. there are a lot of young people or, or girls even looking at your car collection, looking at your watch collection and knowing it's not just wealth that you're displaying, but it's also some taste, some yes. culture and some actual experience and knowledge. So that is a very good thing that you're contributing to the watch community. Thank you, thank you. And uh, going back to watch collecting, I did start off with vintage. Mm -hmm. uh, I did start with Rolex vintage and uh, met a lot of great people in the community, especially the guys in Hong Kong. Um, those guys, VRHK, uh, they taught me a lot. Um, and they spoke you know, very highly of you because oh, we met you. with them a couple of days ago. Okay, so they yeah, were very, I mean, uh, we, yeah, we're all good friends, but they, they're all like big brothers to me um, because I needed guidance. And, and you, of all people, King of Vintage, you should know, like, <laughs> it's a very deep game. Yeah, it's 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 dark. Sometimes it's it's like a black hole when you when you sink in it. But it's also the excitement, right? Yes. If you walk into an AD and you buy a new watch, there's no fun in that. Exactly. Exactly. And then so that's what really ignited my real passion for watches is vintage and and the vintage game is just so it is deep mm -hmm. you know and then you have to learn so much even today i feel like i still have so much to learn i'm not even there yet um but it's it's something that got me into neo vintage yeah and then back to modern which is interesting because i kind of did a full circle again yeah so my watch collection is more uh, everything, 
is more kind of like a little bit of everything. I'll do vintage, neo vintage, and some modern. Yeah. Yeah. So this this game never ends. This passion, you know, it's not a game. It's it's really just part of my life now. It's, it's so good you know? to hear. So <laughs> good to hear. And the thing is, you keep uh, on this journey. You keep exploring. You keep increasing your knowledge, obviously also mostly by collectors, because you can read a lot on the internet, but in the end, if you have the watch in your hand and if you hear somebody talking about the watch, it will definitely give you some insight that you can't just get out of an internet page or a book. Exactly. That's what I believe. Exactly. So before we're meeting the collectors over here, because you uh, set up some drinks with them, right? Yeah, later on. yeah we're going to get some. Uh, to let's get something to eat, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> One more breath. I fucking yeah, love man. this, man. Oh, Seriously. I'm so happy you're here, bro. I'm really, wow. I'm really just happy that you're here. Fucking, I love this view, also, <laughs> man. I swear, man. Yeah. This, is, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. I'm happy you're here to enjoy it.